Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to the second uh, holiday holiday special video, a Blitz, another Blitz miniature. Um, I have the black pieces in this game. This game was also played with a time control of uh, five minutes and three second increments. Yeah, and I just wasn't uh, recording uh, when I was playing these games, so I didn't have a chance to, to do a live, uh, <coughs> live uh, uh, commentary. But uh, anyway, they were cute games, so let's check this one out. E4, E5... F4, the king's gambit, and um, with the black pieces, I like to accept the gambit. Um, it's uh, hard to get a good game by declining the gambit. So um, knight F3, G4, just uh, defending the F pawn and maybe pushing on to, uh, I mean G5, defending the F pawn and maybe pushing on to G4 to harass the knight at some point, which uh, happens immediately because my opponent plays H4, and uh, it sort of encourages the pawn to go forward. Notice you can't defend the pawn because uh, there's a pin on the uh, h-file. So uh, so the pawn to h3 doesn't really defend the pawn. He can just take it. So you have to push the pawn forward. And now knight to e5 is the main move. There's also a, a funny uh, peace sack line, knight to g5, and you play h3 kicking the knight, and he sacrifices on uh, f7. But knight to e5 is the main way to play. And now I play the uh, sideline d6. Uh, I've been playing this uh, a couple times. It's not the main move here. The main move is uh, just to continue developing with knight f6. But uh, I've gotten some interesting games this way. So it uh, gives back the pawn immediately. I'm no longer a pawn up, and my king side is completely ruined. So uh, you might wonder, what, what am I thinking with this? But... Um, but uh, black, I mean, white's king side is not looking so hot either. So there's, uh, it's it's really about an even position. And um, let's see, the most accurate way to play this maybe is bishop to e7 or knight. So one of the knight moves, knight c6 or knight f6. Uh, I've been playing the move h5 here, kicking the uh, knight away and trying to uh, secure the g4 square for my pieces. So. Uh, he should probably play knight f2. Knight h2 is a bit of a mistake because uh, queen takes check. Queen h5 check uh, gives a good edge to uh, white, but if, if uh, good edge to black, that, that's an annoying check. Um, but after knight f2, just to complete the story of this variation, um, then the position is only slightly in favor of white, so it's sort of a typical opening advantage for white, and there's some interesting play, and it's a, a little bit different than the usual king's gambit position that your opponent might already have memorized. So uh, so I can recommend this as a way to play for interesting games. Anyway, knight to h2, we played. I played bishop h6. Uh, probably not the best move. I should probably just uh, develop the knight there. But uh, this is okay. I'm, I'm defending... <clears throat> defending the pawn. Of course, I should have taken the h-pawn there, too. That, that was the main idea. He goes knight f3. Now he's defending his h-pawn, and uh, and white's in good shape. We're once again in that uh, situation where white has a slight edge, but no more than the usual opening advantage. I get my pieces out, knight f6, knight c3, bishop g4. Yeah, I wanted to get a bishop here, pin the knight. And uh, just to try and get the queen side developed. I'm going to castle queen side. My king side uh, looks like a ruin at this point. Uh, white continues logically with d4. I go knight c6 and bishop to c4 and queen to d7. So I'm prepared to castle. And now uh, both sides castle. And in this position, um, actually the engine is starting to slightly favor black. It switched from uh, being in favor of white to being in favor of black over those last few uh, developing moves. Um, if you look at it, my king is actually a little bit more secure than white's king. White's king has got a lot of uh, holes around it, and um, both sides have actively developed pieces. So, um, interesting game from this point. Queen e1, though, my opponent played this, and this is a mistake. And so this is the first time in the game where I get an advantage uh, because I actually notice the mistake <laughs> and uh, play the right move here. So if you want to do a little tactical quiz for yourself, what's the what's the way to exploit the weakness of white's last move? Okay, I'm going to give the answer away. It's uh, the problem. The weakness of the move is that this uh, d pawn is a little bit under defended. The queen was here on d one defending that pawn. It moved over to e1, probably with the idea of uh, maybe getting onto the f-file, unpinning the knight, that kind of thing. But the um, but the d-pawn is just not adequately defended anymore um, because I can exchange off the knight and then just grab it. And so now black has an edge. Um, the knight drops back to f2 
And um, I should probably continue uh, Rook D to G8 is, is a suggestion from the engine. That's probably a great way. I, I took a time out here to uh, get my king to safety, king to B8. I, I didn't see uh, anything uh, disastrous going wrong here. And my opponent, uh, well, he starts pushing his pawns, trying to open up some lines on the king. But my, my attack on his king is just much quicker in this situation. So I bring the H rook over to the G file, just very logical, putting pressure here. And he plays b4. And this is a real mistake. Uh, I, I now have a, uh, a really nice winning combination here, which I missed. So um, this is, uh, there, there's two really good moves here you might, you might uh, consider if you want to pause and think about it. Okay, uh, one move, and maybe not the best, but interesting, is queen to g, um, queen to h3 there, just taking advantage of that. Yeah, queen to h3 taking advantage of the pin and just uh, putting pressure over here. But the, the more spectacular move, and, and actually the best move here, is just to take on g2. <laughs> and uh, if you spotted this, that's pretty good. Um, okay, so if the rook takes the knight, you have knight to f3, forking the king and queen. Um, if the king takes the uh, rook, so if rook takes rook, yeah, you have the fork. If king takes rook, then um, there's actually a mate in five starting with rook to g8. And, um, of course, if the king moves away, then you're just up a whole rook. So that's uh, a, a nice way to finish the game there. Um, I didn't spot that one. I played knight g4, and my opponent responded with rook d2. I'm just, you know, I was sort of focused on that rook. I was thinking maybe I, it's almost trapped over here. Maybe I can take away all its squares. <clears throat> but uh, it found a square over here on d2. And now I do find a tactic in this position. So if you want to uh, guess the move. Unfortunately, I, the move I play, I guess there's a bunch of uh, moves here. So you can <laughs> look look at this position and, and find a bunch of different moves. Um, and the move that I played is not even the best, but it's it's a cute way to break through. So uh, if you want to pause and think about this position for a while, what would you play here? Okay, the move I played was knight f3 check. I just like this because uh, it's a forcing move. Um, you know, obviously I'm forking the king and the queen. And so he's going to take it, and what this does is it opens up a discovered attack on his king. And I play the move knight to e3 check. So all this is pretty forcing. Um, his only uh, move to avoid getting, uh, to, to keep playing, is to play king to h2. But that looks pretty horrible. I mean, my queen is going to get over here, or my rooks are going to double. Um, Let's see, rook to g3 is a recommendation. Yeah, just double the rooks on the g file after the king runs over there. So that, that's pretty awful, but that actually keeps the game going the longest. My opponent instead played uh, king f2, so see if you can spot the uh, final move of the game right here. Okay, I played uh, rook to g2, check. And uh, that's also mate because the king has no square. So a nice mate with just the uh, knight and the rook taking care of the king. Also, um, you know, look at the relative king positions. This shows that, uh, yeah, you know, the uh, the king's gambit is a very double-edged opening. And uh, I've managed, since I castled queenside, to get an extremely safe king position over here, whereas uh, white's king position was all open. But he still could have hold on, held on uh, if he had only... Uh, found a different move besides queen e1. It was when he gave up the d-pawn and I started crashing through and getting all my pieces into the attack. That was when uh, the game was really over. But anyway, cute finish. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will see you again soon. Bye.